And now, speaking of the fun part, it's time for our demonstration. So it gives me great pleasure to welcome Langeschwert Cologne. <laughs> Instructor George Schlager, Senior Instructor Richard Stray, and Head Instructor Michael Rick. Anzeige kassiere, wenn etwas verkehrt geht, wenn ich nicht glaube, dass was passieren wird. Trotzdem macht euch es schön gemütlich und zwar ein bisschen weiter da hinten. Das wird ein bisschen eng, das weiß ich. Wir haben das eben notiert. Wir brauchen eben tatsächlich Platz. Die Dinger sind lang. Also gerade auch hier vorne um euch würde ich bitten. Danke. Man hat damit früher Leuten den Kopf abgeschlagen. Äh, zusätzlich würde ich vorschlagen, dass wenn es denn geht, vielleicht die ersten beiden Reihen sich im Knie. Ja. to understand what's going on. Um, also, we will have to adjust for a couple of things. Um, a sword fight usually starts at long range, right? Unless someone is jumping out from behind a bush or something. Um, so, uh, we'll have to adjust for that. Uh, in reality, uh, moves would be quite large. So he could actually go to the toilet and then kill me. <laughs> With just one step. So uh, we will be symbolizing the, the onset of the fight by him doing a little step instead of us both taking several steps. All right. So basically, this is what it's all about. These techniques also work in castles and small hallways. So. <laughs> 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 Alright. Now, <clears throat> again, uh, we, we are Langes Schwert. We have been doing historical German martial arts since 1992. We train here in Cologne. And today we would like to show you how we get from the written source to an actual working fighting move. You can all calm down now, from now on it's going to be slow motion. <laughs> <laughs> so, instead, uh, in, in case you didn't get what happened, the whole thing, it's slow. Presentation, we will be using four primary sources, uh, fencing books, 
from uh, around 1450 to 1490, all dealing with the same source material. Um, on the right hand side you can actually see our, our second source. Uh, the text you see there will be exactly what we're doing now. Um, also, we use a transcription by Didier de Grenier from France. Uh, he did that in 2003, but since the words don't change, we can still use it. All right. So, um, how do we know what to do? Well, let's change some. I think talk in this direction. Um, he's the good guy. I'm the bad guy. Right? We can see that. <laughs> So, so how, how, how does he know what to do? Uh, I'll be basically reading this to you in English. <laughs> we translated it. Um, in our group we have several historians, uh, several other members as well can actually read the original sources, but still in training we go the easy way and use a transcription. But still usually we have the, the originals with us. Uh, in PDF format, so in case we figure, well, maybe something's wrong there, we can still look at it, right? For the most part, that doesn't really matter, but the difference between seine rechte Seite and deine rechte Seite, <laughs> his right side and your right side, can't make a difference. <laughs> okay, so, what we're dealing with today is the easiest cut, the wrath cut. Um, the sources tell us that the wrath cut breaks all the texts that come from above with the point of the sword and yet it's nothing but the poor peasant's blow. Essentially what you would do with a baseball bat. All right? But very refined. <laughs> so, usually his, his plan would be to come here and kill me. Sadly, I was better than him. I have the initiative, so he has to react. And it says, do it like this. If you come to him in the onset, <laughs> symbolized, um, and he strikes at you from his right side with the long edge diagonally at your head, so it would be this, then also strike at him from your right side, diagonally, from above, onto his sword, without any deflection or defense. His plan. <laughs> it would be a very short fight if I didn't notice that. <laughs> so, further it says, if he is weak, or no, if he is soft in the bind, which implies that I survived the first part, looks like this, then let your point shoot in long towards his face or chest and stab at him. <laughs> See, we like each other so he doesn't actually stab me. <laughs> says this is how you set your point on him. <laughs> okay, next part. If he becomes aware of your thrust and becomes hard in the bind and pushes your sword aside with strength, Then, 
you should rip your sword up along his blade, back down the other side, again along the blade, and hit him in the head. <laughs> that are not said in the texts, right? For example, it says, if he's weak in the bind, or soft in the bind, actually I'm not. I'm neutral, and then I become soft. How do I know this? It doesn't say so right here. But maybe I, I could just try it being soft. It would basically doesn't really work. <laughs> now, if being soft doesn't really work, maybe being hard does. So I'll try that next. Doesn't really work either. <laughs> So this is an example where from fencing, from actually doing it, you know that in the bind you have to be neutral. If you decide too early, he can react to it and you can change your mind fast <laughs> or too fast. All right. Now, what we read here is just one possible outcome of a fight. <clears throat> a fight is always a decision tree, right? Whenever something happens, you can decide, do this, do the other thing. And if you fight at the master level, which is this, you have lots and lots and lots of actions that happen, and the opponent notices it, reacts accordingly, and now if you were to carry out your plan, you would die. So you have to abort your plan and do something else instead. So now we'll show you what our actual plans were and what happened or didn't happen. So, I was the lucky guy who got to go first. I have the initiative. So my plan A is always this. talk is over. But, he's the good guy, so he notices what happened. <laughs> and his plan is this. He hits my sword and my head at the same time. So if I just did what they do in the movies, Notice that it's going bang, he is not dead, I'll do something else. No, it doesn't work. I'm already <laughs> finished. Right? So, I have to notice this while I'm still in the air. Abort the attack, right? I was going to go far, like this. Now I'm not going to do that. I'm going to short my attack and my step. And from here, I'm going to go. I'm going to keep going. He is strong in the bind, so I will walk around his sword and hit him in the face. How to do this is described, I think, two pages later on the green. All right. 
pronounce today. <laughs> Remember, I was supposed to be weak or soft in the bind. Uh, my plan was to kill him, didn't work, I had to abort it. Went into his blade, he was strong. I go around it, which makes me soft. Which is what it says there. Okay. Sadly, he doesn't really give me the time to do my attack. And instead, he keeps going. I was gonna hit him in the face, but since I was soft, he took the middle, hits me in the head. Or thrusts at me depending on the range. In here we don't have much range, so we'll always be hitting. If we're farther apart, it would be a thrust. from getting back inside by just going down this way. And that basically is how the good guy wins. <laughs> Except, of course, we have this little bit down there, where it tells me how to win. <laughs> and it says, well, if he tries to go up and down, you just go in. <laughs> See, we have to stand here. <laughs> Basically, there is never any foolproof way to win. It's always a case of initiative and feeling, feeling the right thing. Well, actually there is one foolproof way, but we're not going to tell you. <laughs> um, so, this concludes our small demonstration. Uh, we didn't It was about, I would say, 60 to 70 percent speed. We couldn't go full speed here because of the beamer. <laughs> um, also, it was was just a fraction of the a fraction of the possible power we could do it at. Um, we counted yesterday. Uh, we had Ben for for the practice session. Um, what you just saw are nine different actions that are taken within about one and a half seconds. And that's not studied or, or choreography. In, in each instance you feel what is happening. You feel soft, hard, left, right, whatever. It's, it's, it's not magic. Everyone does it. Um, well, all, all martial arts do, do it. Once they get to a certain level. Um, so, we would like to thank Didier de Cranier, who unknowingly provided us with the transcriptions. Um, we would like to thank Victor Noah, 
even though we don't need it that often because we can actually read the stuff. Uh, it's a great resource for, for everyone else and it's always good to have that. And well, yeah, we train at the Uni Mensa every Sunday at 2. So whoever wants to drop by and join is invited to do so.